year for AT, um, I really had my unit focus on survivability operations. Uh, there's three things that we do as engineers. We either usually work with mobility units, counter mobility or survivability. And this year's focus has been survivability. And so of that, uh, we have real three goals that myself and the Sergeant Major had that we're trying to encompass out here. And that's uh, junior leader development. We're really focusing on honing and refining our engineer capabilities. And then we're also trying to do as much combined arms service and support that we possibly can as engineers. We have a, a young leadership here uh, with the engineer battalion. Young E4s, E5s are having to step up. Um, the e, E5s, E6s, and E7s are all getting them out there on the equipment. They're putting them in charge uh, to mentor them into the next role that they need to take over. Or we actually seen it, uh, we were digging um, fighting positions for the artillery and the lower enlisted are actually down there measuring, making sure everything's right. They're directing the dozers as they're digging to make sure they know how deep they gotta go if they need to make it wider. So they're really making an impact and they're getting ready. I've talked to many soldiers and they're asking me, what do I need to do to make it to the next rank? How can I get there quicker? And with the mentorship they're getting, I believe they're gonna get there um, sooner than what they expected. It's good training, a lot of stick time. Um, we don't get that back home. And AT, we, I get to get in pieces of equipment and uh, learn, be proficient at it. Um, I haven't got a chance to get in the dozer, so this AT I'm getting a lot of stick time and being more proficient at my job. I've recently come from field artillery, so it's really cool to see how it all comes together and watching 1st platoon and 2nd platoon work together. Yeah, the huge thing is the getting the actual mission breakdown for these guys. Um, metal tasks can uh, sometimes ruin the morale just doing those over and over again. Uh, breaking down an actual mission, getting several pieces of equipment, having a task and working together, doing dozer teams. I mean, that's the biggest thing for these guys and they've never experienced it because um, not everyone does operating on the civilian side. They used to be a field artillery, so they had changed over to engineers. So a lot of them, this is their first time actually getting a chance to get more than 20 minutes in equipment. A lot of the soldiers are about getting about two hours a piece in equipment. We have this huge playground. Um, with our D7s, our D6Ks, uh, D7s, our uh, 120 m graders, skid steers. Uh, they have a lot of opportunity to keep uh, busy out here and do their job. It's been absolutely valuable uh, being able to get the younger soldiers some field craft time and having junior NCOs and senior NCOs explain field craft to young soldiers to get out here and set up tents and dig fighting positions and learn how to camouflage and tactically move and become part of nature, uh, you know, to prevent the enemy from being able to spot us. Forces everywhere in the world depend on each other for all kinds of things at different times. So getting outside of our wheelhouse as an engineer battalion and working with other units just promotes and provokes thought of junior leaders to be able to help out adjacent units in a fight. This is exactly what people sign up for, uh, to see the world and to do Army things. I mean, overseas, and, and we've both been overseas, we've both seen it, it's the ability to go in and actually talk about what the engineers can do for somebody else. They know how to get out there and operate dozers and graders. But what they need to be able to do is go out and talk to somebody that they're actually supporting and say, this is what we can do. I want, by the time that we're done here, that that artillery commander or that aviation commander has an understanding of how long it takes for engineers to do what they need to do. And I want that young NCO or officer to be able to communicate that effectively to them. And so that's the next step after you learn how to operate your equipment, is then understanding truly the capabilities and talking to somebody else about what that is. That's exactly what we do downrange.